What's going on, everybody? It is April 5th, and we have a five or six game slate, depending on which site you play on. Uh, DK doesn't have the Pacers Warriors game included, or at least they didn't when I looked. I could also be a moron. Could go either direction, really. Nope, it's just not there. Sweet. Um, not a bad slate, I guess. It's better than uh, the baseball late slate, so I highly recommend playing basketball over baseball. But let's just dive in. Uh, first game up, Pacers and Warriors. Uh, Pacers with a 103.75 implied total. Warriors, two-point favorites in Indiana. Uh, Pacers with the 10th highest implied total. So not the best spot um, in the world. Oladipo, 9,500 on FanDuel. I don't have a huge issue there. Um, I'm not going to do backflips or anything over it, but, you know, he went for 57 in his last game, 69, <laughs> nice, uh, in the game before that. I wouldn't expect that to continue against the Warriors, but I don't have an aversion to it. Uh, the guy that I like the most coming out of uh, Indiana, surprise, surprise, Miles Turner, um, 6,100 on FanDuel. Well, he only went for 19.9 in 35 minutes in his most recent game. Um, he could very easily get to this 35.6 threshold that he hit on Easter. 6,100 is just a great price. Uh, it's a good matchup for Turner, too. I would expect him to be out there um, for some pretty solid minutes. So Turner will be a guy that I focus on. Um, very minimal amounts of Thad Young or Bojan. Uh, my, my major focus coming out of Indiana would be on Turner. For Golden State, uh, 105.75 implied total is ninth. Um, not the best matchup. Indiana pretty solid defensively uh, for today. Um, we've still got you know three of the biggies playing, just no Curry. Uh, for Clay at 6,500, I'm indifferent. Um, Indiana has been pretty bad against shooting guards which fits clay so i think he's worth an interesting flyer uh, but i rarely get excited about having clay thompson um quinn cook not really the play for me either uh, i'd be more likely to take a look at draymond at 8200 i think that's a really nice price for him and uh durant kind of scares me there's enough um, high-priced guys elsewhere that I don't think that you need to get to Durant. And 11000 I just don't really love for him right now. He's got a lot of not good around him. Now, don't get me wrong. He got 59 on Easter Sunday and 55 uh, two nights ago. So he's right at that value number. It's not the best spot for me, though. And uh, I'm going to probably have very little... Um, Kevin Durant tonight. It's just not the it's not the best like matchup overall. It's uh unless I did I type that implied total incorrectly. It's so low that I, I'm finding myself like I feel like I'm wrong. Two and two oh nine. Two and two oh yeah no I didn't I'm I'm right um so that implied total is seven and almost seven and a half points below golden state's recent scoring average it's a pace down for game for them um just not a huge fan of it on FanDuel. if we head to cleveland Cavs hosting the wizards uh six point favorites uh the Cavs are at home uh, they have the fourth highest implied total pretty good matchup for small forwards and power forwards uh which i think encompasses LeBron James perfectly. 11-7 um, on FanDuel, 11-6 on DK. I like LeBron a lot. He's someone that I'm definitely going to be have, or I'm definitely going to have a nice chunk of. I like the prices, and uh, I like the upside here, particularly for the Cavs. Still playing pretty hard. Uh, no George Hill tonight, though, unfortunately for the Cavs. Um, so, you know, don't think that you need to fire up Calderon because he went for 37.8 two nights ago. Kevin Love, 7,400, 7,600 on DK. Um, I really like him on, on FanDuel, actually. He's a little overpriced on DraftKings, but went for 40 in this most recent game. Um, no reason to think that he couldn't do that, and at 7,400, that could be a really nice value. So I do like LeBron 
I do like Kevin Love. Um, you know, Rodney Hood is fine at 4,200. Jordan Clarkson is fine at 4,300, but very minimal amounts of those guys. I don't really go crazy for them because they're just such... I mean, they're at best the third option. And when you're the third option behind LeBron and Kevin Love, you're probably not going to get the touches you really want to get. Um, so... In this game, for me, it's just LeBron and Love with minimal amounts of Hood and Clarkson in GPPs. For the Wizards, 106.25 implied total is 7th. A uh, very nice matchup for the Wiz. Cavs, not very good on D. They've been good at limiting shooting guards, and that's about it. Um, we've got Beal at 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. Uh, he went for 41 fantasy points two nights ago in just 29 minutes um, I would expect him to get a full allotment of minutes here and uh, I'd be a little apprehensive of having him just because of how Cleveland matches up against shooting guards I'd be more likely to have a good amount of John Wall 8700 on FanDuel 8200 on DK obviously Calderon can't check him um, so defensive matchups could be a little interesting uh, Wall looks to be in a great spot at that $8,700 price point. I actually expected it to go a little bit higher than that, and it didn't. So I think you're still in a position to take advantage of John Wall. Uh, oh, I can see my background already fading out, and it's going to bother me. So I'm going to handle it now. Silly, silly Logitech camera. Whoop, whoop. Perfect. Uh, yeah, my focus is on Wall here, um, with a, and a good bit of him. Uh, Washington with the third best point guard matchup right now. And for me, being able to slot Wall in is, is a no-brainer. Uh, little bits of Porter and Markeith Morris, I think, are perfectly fine on, uh, on either site, but nothing crazy on Porter at 7,000. Uh, at 6,100 on DK, I think that looks pretty good, though. Uh, but my main focus is Wall, um, and I'll probably have a minimal amount of Beal on FanDuel. He's a little bit more playable on DK. Uh, for the Rockets now, Rockets hosting the Blazers. 112.5 implied total for the Rockets, which is third. Uh, 102 implied total for the Blazers, which is 12th. Uh, likely no Lillard tonight, um, so keep an eye on Houston as well to see if anybody's sitting. Uh, Harden is at 11,000 on FanDuel, 11,400 on DK. Um, Portland has not, or, uh, you know, Portland's relatively solid on D, no really good matchups. Uh, only small forward is a bad matchup. Um, Harden at 11,000 and 11,400. I don't really love it here. Uh, I know he went for 66 uh, two nights ago. I'll have some Harden. But I think there's enough out there at shooting guard, namely the shooting guard on the opposite side of this game, where I would rather look to spend my money. Uh, Chris Paul, not somebody that I'm I'm actively going to go after. Uh, 7,600 on FanDuel is okay. 8,000 on DK is going to be a pretty tough sell for me. Um, Really, outside of Harden a little bit, I'm not really wild about anything here. Unless we find out that somebody's going to be out just for rest. Um, I don't really want to have much of anything from Houston outside of Harden. You could probably talk me into Capella on DK at 6,400. I think that would be fine. Um, but I think there are better spots out there tonight. 102 implied total for Portland, which is 12th. Um, solid matchup for shooting guards. The rest of it is actually a little difficult. Um, and uh, with that solid matchup, you've get, you get CJ McCollum at 7,200 without Dame Lillard. 7,500 on DK. Uh, McCollum is an absolutely exceptional play on FanDuel. Uh, highly, highly recommend him. He will be in a lot of my lineups. And someone else that'll be in a lot of my lineups because the pricing isn't corrected. 
Shabazz Napier, 3,600 on FanDuel. He should be starting and getting 30, close to 30 minutes without Lillard. And if he does that at 3,600, he's a no-brainer. He's basically a free square tonight. Um, he'll probably be the highest owned player on the slate. Uh, just going off the top of my head right now, um, that he'll be the highest owned guy on FanDuel for sure. And with good reason. It's going to be hard for him to miss value at 3,600. Now, granted, Lillard sat out on the 28th and he only put up 14 fantasy points. So be prepared for that. But you're, you're willing to take that shot in this game. Uh, so for me, lots of CJ McCollum, lots of Shabazz Napier, uh, Nurkic, 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Uh, I don't really have much of an issue running Nurkic out there. Just be prepared if the Rockets go small, I could see Portland doing the same. Um, but I think Nurkic has a has an okay opportunity. Not the best matchup or anything, but I think the price is functionally okay. To Milwaukee we go. 114 implied total, second overall on the entire slate. Uh, going up against Brooklyn, uh, the Bucks are eight-point favorites at home. We've got a very nice matchup for point guards, power forwards, and centers. Really difficult sledding for shooting guards. So we'll start with Giannis. 11-5 um, on FanDuel, 11-1 on DK. Uh, I love him too. I think he looks really nice. Uh, I like him. I like Braun. Uh, small forward is loaded tonight, which is another reason that I don't have a lot of interest in forcing in Durant. Um, I think Middleton, Bledsoe both look okay right around that $8,000 price point on both sites. I don't have a problem taking either one of those guys. I prefer Bledsoe to Middleton just because of the matchup. Milwaukee with the number one point guard matchup. So that's something that I would definitely want to try to take advantage of. Bledsoe uh, looking like a really nice point guard play. I would prefer Wall to Bledsoe because I think there's more upside there. But I would understand grabbing Bledsoe. Uh, this is a guy that went for 50 on Easter Sunday, 63.6 the game before that. Um, he's been playing really well lately. Save for the 22-point game he put up two nights ago. And then Jabari Parker uh, played 31 minutes the most recent game, played 39 minutes on Sunday. Um, he's at 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. If he's going to be playing those sorts of minutes, um, you know, Jabari Parker is much more in play. Uh, second best matchup for power forwards on the board. If we're going to call Parker the power forward, uh, he might be nominally the, sh the small forward depending on the lineup. But I like Jabari a lot, particularly on DK. That $4,900 price point for a guy that can score the basketball like he does, sign me up. Um, that's something I would really like. Uh, it's hard to not like most of the Bucks here. This is a, a great matchup for them. Brooklyn Nets, 106 implied total. Eighth on the day. Uh, decent matchup for centers, and that's about it. Not likely to see Damari Carroll tonight. Um, he's going to be day-to-day -day for the rest of the year. They don't really have much to play for, so, you know, not exactly a young guy. He could probably use some rest at this point. Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Uh, I like that a lot. I like that price point. He only got 17 minutes in the most recent game, but if he's going to get up in that 30 range, I'm actually happy with that price point. Um, so more than okay going with Hollis Jefferson, uh, provided we don't hear any weird information about their rotations. Um, other than that, you know, like I, I would, I'll have a little bit of Alan Crabb in GPPs. I'll have a little bit. And I mean a little bit of Joe Harris and GPPs, not 30% like two nights ago. <laughs> uh, but mostly my focus would be Karis LeVert and Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. I like both of their prices, uh, and I like LeVert's upside in a GPP. Not super wild about the price, but I'll take it. Um, and, the, and the Nets aren't a team that I'm going to overly focus on. But I think they have the opportunity to look okay in a GPP. Jazz now. 109.25 implied total. Tied for fifth with the, the Wolves. They're seven-point favorites at home against the Clippers, which actually surprises me. I would have thought it was more. 
Um, love the Jazz. Great matchup. Best matchup for shooting guards on the entire board. And that is why you'll see an A for Donovan Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell plays big minutes. He's got a matchup against you know a, a very poor shooting guard defensive team. Uh, I think Mitchell looks like one of the better plays on the night. Um, Utah, their implied total five points higher than their uh, their recent run of scoring. It's a pace up game for them. Um, I'm going to end up with a lot of Donovan Mitchell. Lots of Donovan Mitchell, CJ McCollum lineups, I would imagine. Uh, I'm perfectly okay running out Rudy Gobert, second best matchup for centers. Gobert, 9,000 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DraftKings. You need to be playing a healthy amount of Rudy Gobert on DK. Um, I'd be okay taking flyers on Joe Ingles. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Rubio at 7,900, but I'm f- I'm fine using him. At 7,000 on DK, he's much more in play. Really, everything on the Jazz looks really nice on DK outside of Jay Crowder. Um, and even then, I don't. it's not something that I hate. But Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert are both exceptional plays on either site. Now, the Clippers. No Gallo tonight. Surprise, surprise. Um, he, I don't know, stubbed his toe or cut himself shaving or whatever it is that Gallo does to be hurt every other day. Uh, so you'll be getting a steady diet of Tyrone Wallace. Um, if we're talking about matchup, uh, real difficult for small forwards and power forwards. Nothing outwardly great across the board. Um, I'm going to have very minor amounts of Austin Rivers, very minor amounts of Tobias Harris. You know, I'm normally over the moon for Lou Will. He'll be relatively low owned on my end just because of where the value is at shooting guard. Um, I'm not really wild about anything on uh, on the Clippers. Even though Tyron Wallace is going to get a ton of minutes, I don't see him as a terribly large upside play at 4,700. Uh, so for me, the, I don't want to say the Clippers are a stay away because that would be a little too extreme, but there's nobody that jumps out, and they're playing you know, arguably the best defensive team in basketball. So I'm not going to get too crazy there. Final game of the night, and boy, is it a doozy. Let's grab the 538 NBA odds for right now just to talk about it, even though this is a DFS podcast. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Timberwolves projected to finish tied for 7th with the Pelicans, 89% chance to make the playoffs. Nuggets projected a game behind them, 36% chance to make the playoffs. This game is going to tell a very big story. If the Nuggets do not win here, they are not going to make the playoffs, in my opinion. They're, I would expect those odds to crater. Wolves desperately need this to keep pace and stay alive. If the Nuggets win this game, the battle for those final two spots is going to be very interesting for the rest of the year. Uh, this is one of my more highly anticipated games of the entire season. I like both teams. Um, it's it's something that I definitely want to keep an eye on, not just from a DFS perspective, but just as a basketball fan. Uh, 114.25 implied total for the Nuggets is first. They are five-point favorites at home. Um, difficult matchup against Minnesota. They're still really solid from a DFS perspective on the defensive end. Um, should be seeing Jimmy Butler back soon. They're going to need it. Um, because if they don't have him back shortly, he might be coming back next year without a playoff appearance. Uh, Jamal Murray, um, not somebody that I love on FanDuel tonight, but 6,300 on DraftKings. I wouldn't hesitate to grab him there. Uh, Jokic, 11,000 on FanDuel, 10-4 on DK. He's been playing out of his gourd for the last week. Last four scoring days, 58, 63, 56, 66. Um... Not my favorite matchup in the world for him, but with the way he's playing and what Denver's playing for, he's certainly going to be looking for his. Uh, I don't have any issues running out Jokic. Uh, I'd be happy having Will Barton. I'd be happy having Paul Millsap. Um, Wilson Chandler, not a guy that I'm looking for, but any one of those first four guys for Denver is fine by me. 
particularly Jamal Murray on DraftKings, where a $6,300 price point is just a little crazy. Went for 40 a couple nights ago, you know, regularly in the mid-30s. Um, he's just criminally underpriced there. Final team to look at, Timberwolves, 109.25 implied total, tied for fifth. Very nice matchup. Denver not not been great uh, defensively lately. Um, we've got Wiggins at 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. I like Wiggins a lot on FanDuel. There's just so many good shooting guard options tonight. Don't be afraid to use most of them. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns is 10,000 on FanDuel, 9,800 on DK. Um, had a down game on Easter Sunday, had a couple days of rest, got some more of his uh, PUBG in. Uh, so we'll see if he played last night. It worked for him uh, the last time he played into the night, but that was the Hawks. Um, no problems having Carl Anthony Towns here. I think it's a really nice matchup for him. Uh, there's no, you know, he, he should be fine. It's the number one or number four matchup for power forwards, number three for center, depending on what the matchup or depending on where Towns is slotted, although mostly the four. Um, Jeff Teague at 6,800 on FanDuel, if he plays, I think is in an exceptional spot at that price. Um, uh, he's definitely someone I'm going to be looking at, but you do want to keep an eye on it. Teague did not play their most recent game on Sunday, but hopefully a couple days rest will help. Uh, I think Taj is fine as a uh, punt-ish type power forward. Uh, 5,100 on both sites. So, you know, he looks a little bit better for me on FanDuel than he does on DK. And then uh, B. Jelly hasn't been playing as well as he did earlier in the season. 4,400 on FanDuel, though, is a very nice price for someone um, with a solid matchup. I like Bielitsa on FanDuel. I would probably ignore him on DraftKings. Whew. It was a quick rip through uh, through the slate. Let's plug this crap in. Find out what we like. Oh. I'm excited for basketball tonight. The baseball slate looks like garbage, so I'm happy to ignore it. Bump up randomness. Let's see what we got. A lot of Napier. A lot of B Jelly. A lot of Jabari. A lot of Donovan Mitchell. It's going to be a fun night. I'm really excited for basketball. Let's sort these out and take a look. Uh, Napier, I don't see a really a way around it. Um, I don't really see much of a way around CJ either. Jabari at that price is really appealing to me. And then I'd like to grab John Wall. That takes me to seven. Um, what do the two LeBron lineups look like? Yeah, um, ooh, I don't love the Gortat one there. I was sold on everything. So let's lock Wall, Napier, Mitchell, CJ, LeBron, and Jabari. And let's do 20 more. Gortat Atlas. So let's look at the Turner lineups. Turner, Gibson, Bielitsa, I'd be okay with. Um, Turner, Harrell, Bojan, I'd be less okay. And you can see it's a 305 projected total with my uh, projections. Drops to 299 here. Uh, this first one is the best one, and I like that lineup a lot. Um, that's something that I would want to end up with in a GPP. Bielitsa is quite the flyer, but he'll be relatively low owned. We'll check out um, check out DraftKings now, where we won't have the benefit of that Warriors game to start. Keep an eye out today for slam dunks and rankings at awesomeo.com. If you are playing baseball. You know, all that same content is out there as well. Uh, we're churning it out right now, guys. If you can't find it on our site, it probably doesn't exist. Alrighty. Hundred lineups. Let's go. Yeah, you can see Jamal Murray 
a little closer to the top here compared to where he was on FanDuel. Just a dramatically better price. Um, I'm going to start with Murray and get Mitchell, get Jabari, get Gobert, get John Wall, and then we'll already be at five lineups, or six lineups, rather. Um, let's see, which one do I like the most? Let's grab Wall, Mitchell, Parker, Murray, and Gobert, and we'll do 20 uniques. Sign me up for one of these lineups that have Jeff Teague. No, nope, there's only one lineup with Jeff Teague. I need a small forward. What do we get when we go to Will Barton? I'd be fine with that first lineup. Um, Wall, Mitchell, Parker, Favors, Gobert, Barton, Harold, Murray. Yeah. I might be a little too overcommitted. I, I might want to walk back maybe John Wall on DK. That'll probably that would probably open up a couple extra things. Now it's still pulling him almost immediately. Lots of Derek Favors love on DK. I didn't mention him before, but seems to be coming up a lot. 5100, I think that's worth a peek. DK looks a little bit trickier. I like the pricing on FanDuel. Um, you get that Napier uh, low price, which really lets you open up into some guys with a little bit better um, high-end talent. So that's where we're at here uh, for the NBA slate. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up here in the comments or on Twitter. Um, like and subscribe the video. Uh, we're getting really close to the 1,000 subscriber threshold, so the channel is growing very, very quickly, which makes us very happy. Um, it's going to be a hub for a lot of content moving forward. So thank you guys for that. Uh, we really appreciate you all. Um, and uh, best of luck tonight. We'll have a live stream going somewhere around 6 p.m. tonight. <clears throat> Myself and Chris Spags again. So come join in on that sort of fun. We'll talk baseball for the first half hour and then transition to basketball uh, till, you know, 7, 7.15, somewhere in that area. Um, Best of luck tonight. I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later.